explore, you know, what are uh, the health and wellness needs of our LGBTQ and Asian community in New York City. Um, we wanted to look at like what they're calling now, it's like this buzzword of social determinants. Mm -hmm. um, but what are those forces that kind of shape our lives and that have so much impact on our health and wellness, right? As well as like, what sort of models do we kind of want to explore that can help with addressing some of these issues? We find that even you know, throughout all of these years of work, we're kind of asking the same question or facing the same issue of um, invisibility, you know, almost. Um, because we still find that, you know, we have Asian American providers that are reluctant to provide care for LGBTQ people, and we've got LGBTQ providers that maybe are only speaking English or are not culturally as responsive as community members would like. We were able to pull out 377 survey responses from LGBTQ, Asian, um, and Pacific Islanders in New York City. The spoiler alert, like the end of the conversation really arrives at these five recommendations. Uh, mental health services and psychiatry was like at the top of every survey ranking question that we had. Everyone really um, has mental health on their mind when they're thinking about their health and wellness. There was also this ask of more free STAD HIV uh, testing and I think for us this is really more about like publicity letting people know that these services exist um, people also ask for sexual health and hygiene education and this was a surprise to us um, people uh, really uh, felt that dermatology was like a need in terms of you know uh, services and this not so much a surprise uh, having culturally competent uh, bilingual LGBTQ sensitive non-judgmental healthcare providers what was really nice about having surveyed over 377, 377 people is that we not only were able to look at Asian Americans and LGBT people as a whole, but also we could do ethnic breakouts, right? The needs of Korean Americans, Korean lesbians is very different from a Bengali undocumented worker, right, who might be bisexual. And so we're able to have such a robust data set, we're actually able to look at some of that. But we did have a very large sample um, who identified as gender non-binary, um, trans, um, or gender non-conforming. The age was skewed a little bit heavier on the 20 to 30 year olds. Um, most of our respondents, 60%, uh, almost 60% were bilingual in an Asian language. And we did the survey in nine Asian, uh, Asian, South Asian, Southeast Asian, and West Asian languages. Um, a third identified with having some sort of disability. And so some of them, at least focus groups, were actually with trans communities. A third of our respondents identified being trans and gender variant. One in five identified as immigrants. Five percent identified as sex workers. And we actually had focus groups that looked at some of their specific needs, issues, and concerns. We looked at the health and wellness needs of our community, and we asked, what are the greatest health needs of our community? And they said, um, depression, anxiety, STDs, and addiction. When we asked them what their most important well-being need, it was around emotional health. People also identified health insurance enrollment, and actually there was a lot of people who identified as, as being immigrants. Um, and then when we asked both of combined questions on your general health and wellness needs, again, depression, anxiety, addictions, and finances came up. And also finding an LGBTQ non-judgmental provider. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the, the health needs of Latin of access for mental health services. 37 percent of our sample said that finances was a barrier toward getting health and wellness. And yet, I had just mentioned that our sample skews heavier on people who make over $75,000. So I was kind of like, this is like not making sense. So when we did, a, actually, the one in five over 100,000, a lot of people are in tech. Um, when we actually look closer at this, what we found is people who even have good jobs and maybe have health care are having to self-pay for their mental health services. Therapists are not taking insurance. People have a therapist or provider that they actually like and they have to pay for this themselves. Um, some uh, insurance programs only take, only allow 10 sessions and someone needs a lot more than just 10 sessions. Like if you're meeting with somebody every week, that's like, what, two and a half months. You're so, it's free, it's like, you know, this, it's a really hard time. And so we found out that finances continue to be a barrier at all income strata in trying to take care of our community's needs. When asked about STD and HIV, 
issues. Um, most of the individuals identify, a plurality identified their prevention. Um, and Melanie had talked about how his SED education, one of the things that was really interesting, interesting when I was doing this study is that I asked people what their STD, STI, um, HIV needs were, and they talked about prevention, testing, and healthcare, and we're representing an organization that actually provides HIV testing, healthcare services. Why are people saying that they need this? And what we discovered is that it's, a it's, a, it's an issue about publicity. It's people knowing that Aperture provides these services, that you can get free testing, that you can get HIV meds um, at a very low cost and that it's actually available. But there was this juncture in communication between the need, the services that Aperture provides and the needs that are their community. I would also probably add the language ability became a barrier and so people need to know this information and also access to information. Public health. And so when we ask people about what are the health and wellness things that you want to learn about, you don't have to go to a doctor, but what do you want to workshop on? Mental health, addiction, emotional issues. Cancer actually came up, this is the next slide, it also came up on emerging health needs. Now what was really interesting around cancer is that it came up statistically in the survey in our responses, but in every focus group and interview, it never came up. And I'm like, there's something different about this question. And so when we dug more deeper into this, and we asked people about cancer, it was that people didn't understand actually, how do you get cancer? How do you survive cancer? There was still a belief that cancer is terminal. I, you know, had cancer, I had it when, seven, eight years ago, I'm fine, <coughs> right? Cancer is a very manageable disease. It's not curable, but I've been in remission for, you know, over seven years. Many people have been in remission for over 15 years, but people don't necessarily know that. And so it's not that Aperture has to go hire an oncologist and actually provide this information, but how do you test for testicular cancer, getting mammograms, that you can actually treat cancer, that you can live with cancer for a very long time and it's fine, and people don't understand this. Um, there's still a lot of stigma in our community around cancers, and again, it's seen as a terminal disease, which frankly, I mean, I'm still here, so I assure you, it, not everyone dies of cancer. In fact, it actually is pretty manageable. Dermatology was the other one that came up. Um, and you know, when we had this conversation with Aperture, we talked about what were some of the needs. Everyone has a primary care doctor, an eye doctor, a dentist, and a pharmacist. Who's the next person that you see? A dermatologist. Uh, and you know, you have a rash, and you're like, well, what is it, right? Or you have a rash like in your groin, right? It could be an STD, or it could just be eczema, right? Which is like very different, right? And so you want to have a dermatologist try to look at some of these issues. Pharmaceutical needs, um, Apache has a pharmacy, and it's really cheap, and they have home delivery care. We ask them, what do people need? They need their psychotropic drugs. Dealing with ADHD, depression, anxiety, uh, Lexapro, uh, Wellbutrin, and also HIV AIDS uh, prevention. When we looked at the need for particular populations, students and youth identified that the psychotropic drugs for dealing with ADHD, um, ADD was most the biggest thing. Women and students identified drugs to deal with depression, anxiety. Uh, men identified HIV prevention, PrEP, and immigrants, they needed vaccines. Which I think some of this actually makes sense, but what was really important to, about this and why it's really great is that we can make the argument to the elected officials, to the Department of Health, that these are the needs of our community. Right? We have real data that talks about why our community needs healthcare, why do we need policy changes. Some of the other studies that we looked at looked at the health and wellness of AAPIs, South Asians, or LGBTQ, but never people at the intersection. And one of the great things that we found is that a number of us, you know, we actually do take care of ourselves. It was interesting because when we actually did the focus group of sex workers, I mean, they really do eat very well and they actually do exercise regularly because the sex workers were like, look, my livelihood is based on my body. We have to look good. It was curious that 27% of our community was having sex without protection and actually we're not on prep. Ah. And so we looked a little bit further into this data 
Um, I don't have this slide up, but we looked at, it was mostly 20-somethings, gay and bi trans, generally men and trans people who were mostly Chinese, who had the highest level of using, having sex without protection and also not being on PrEP. But one in four used some sort of drugs, often party drugs, and also one um, in five identified that they were into some sort of kinky bondage or SM kind of sex. And no judgment on what the activities are and how we have intimate relationships, but it's important for people to know and our providers to know, because look, as someone said in one of our focus groups, if you have an anal tear, is it because you had constipation or if you got fisted, right? And there, and no judgment, right? This is why we said non judgment health care providers, but that's important to know. There's a lot of stigma about health, particularly sexual health and hygiene. A couple of people talked about it, why they go to Apple chairs because they don't want to talk to their doctor about things that are going on down there. Right. We don't want to talk about our foreskin, labia maintenance, anal health, but these are things that we have and these are things that you know, can cause problems and we want to make sure that our community is healthy, you know, is risk free or understands the risk, you know, and can have general wellness in their lives so that you can enjoy life to the fullest. And so doing this study was really rewarding in trying to figure out some of these issues. This was after the pandemic, but when we asked people about their physical health and their mental health, you know, they felt pretty good about their physical health. So that was delightful, and I was happy to see this. But when we asked about their mental health, it was good or poor or just fair. And so it really is a consistent finding that mental health services, depression, anxiety, it's a tough time. It's a lot stuff that's going on right now. There's like wars going on over the place, people getting called out. Um, you know, we need to find ways of taking care of our community. The report actually has a breakout, and I mentioned this at the beginning. We were actually able to disaggregate this data by South Asian groups, Vietnam, uh, Southeast Asians, Filipino, Chinese. We actually have a specific South Asian breakout that actually disaggregates Bangladeshi, Pakistani, Asian Indian, and Indo-Caribbean. I don't know if I have enough Sri Lankans or Nepalese in it, but I have like at least the three big ones. Um, the study that you have actually has that breakout. We also have it by age, immigrant groups, all this stuff. That's not all in this report. The big report is about 4, 300 pages. Um, but the report that's on Apatis' website actually has, actually we might have some of the full reports if you want to take home 300 pages of literature. It's really <laughs> exciting. Uh, my mother loves this stuff. Anyway, uh, you can try to find this information out. And again, mental health services, psychiatry, uh, publicity on HIV testing, uh, sexual health, hygiene and education, dermatology, and then culturally competent, bilingual, non-judgmental healthcare providers. Thank you so much for coming.